When you're new to coding and don't already have a lot of software engineering experience, projects are the best way to show off your skills and have something concrete on your resume to show off to these companies that you have what it takes to work there. So without further ado, here are five interesting coding project ideas that I believe anyone can do with a basic coding background. The first idea is to create a simple 2D game. I personally really like creating games because of the fun and interactive components of games that other projects don't really have. So coding tic-tac-toe in Python is a great place to start because the game is very simple in itself. You can write it in just a couple dozen lines of code. And by using the terminal as your canvas, you don't really have to design a complex UI to get started. All you have to do is before each turn, just print out the lines and the X's and O's that are already placed onto the board and use the built-in Python input function to get the user input for where they wanna go next. And as far as making games that are more complex, you can really go as far as you want to. How would you make a more advanced 2D game? In terms of algorithmic complexity, Complexity, you just focus on games that have a little more to them than tic-tac-toe. Options range from Connect 4 to Battleship to Sudoku, but you don't even have to go further than tic-tac-toe to really get a comprehensive coding project. For instance, because the bare bones version of this project only uses the terminal as its canvas, one way to boost the complexity of this project is just to add a more compelling user experience by creating a more beautiful user interface that actually has a proper board designed and interactive buttons for user input. One of the projects I have on my resume was a coding project that I did in one of my classes in my freshman year. It was Pokemon themed and you basically had to find your way around a maze, finding different opponents to battle, and eventually once you made it out of the maze, the final boss awaited you at the exit. For libraries and modules that will help you create these games, to create just a bare bones application that uses the terminal as its canvas, you really don't need anything external. But in order to start building on that user interface, you'd probably want to take a look at modules such as TK Inter or Pygame. Using these, you can not only create beautiful UI components, you can also start registering things like mouse clicks or button presses for the user input instead of always having to use the Python input function. So I'm such an indecisive person to the point where I often have to flip a coin just to force myself to make a decision to do one thing or the other. So if you're anything like me, you'll really love this second project idea because it's a decision maker. This was heavily inspired by a TikTok filter that basically had you choose between two different food cuisines over and over over again until you finally ended up on a single winner. So each decision is made binary where you only have to choose between one or the other option. The winner of those two options stays on while a new option is introduced into the spot of the loser. And this program runs until all of the possible options are exhausted and the user makes a final decision on what to do. So this is another one of those simple projects where you really only need Python's input function to get all of the possible options. So you just request for the user to fill in the potential food options, the to-do items that they have to do throughout their day, TV shows they want to watch, etc. Those choices will then be randomly shuffled and presented two at a time to the user until there's just one winner left. One way to boost the complexity of this project would be to add a visual component. So again, using a module like TK Inter could add a great visual and interactive component to this project. The third project idea I have for you is to create a personal website, portfolio website, whatever you want to call a website that features you and everything about you and your projects to the user. So making a website is one of those projects where every time you add a line or a few lines of code, you can see tangible progress with your project. Me personally, I care a lot about that instant feedback after coding a couple lines, but outside of that, there are many good reasons why every aspiring or current software engineer should have a personal website that shows off what they do as a programmer. First, your website is a form of marketing yourself to recruiters who take a look at your resume. So my website is at the top of my resume and on my website, I have links to unlisted YouTube videos so you can only access those videos from my personal website. And those videos are basically just live demonstrations of some of the projects that I've done. And every time I send out a couple new job applications, my YouTube videos typically get a couple views. So recruiters are definitely taking a look at your website if it's listed on your resume, if you make it far along into the interview process. As far as what should go on the actual website itself, there are a couple general guidelines, such as a short blurb about yourself, maybe a couple of pictures, in-depth explanations about the projects that you've done. But this is really your opportunity to differentiate yourself from some of the other applicants. You can add in little animations or quirks into your website that really show off your personality in a way that a resume can't do. I think it's really important to write a little bit more about yourself to humanize yourself to the recruiter who looks at dozens or even hundreds of applications a day. So having a website that stands out to the recruiter could really score you some points. The second important reason for having a website is a little bit more practical and it's just
just that it introduces you to front-end web development. If you're not familiar, front-end development means working on the visual components of a certain project. If you're a front-end web developer, that means you're responsible for everything that the user sees on the website's landing pages. And to do this, you use languages such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are typically regarded as the front-end languages that aren't typically taught in normal coding classes. And that's because a lot of coding classes typically just focus on back-end related languages like Python or Java. So developing a website on your own time can be a great way to get introduced to the other side of programming. So the fourth project I have for you is to create a basic iOS app. So I know that creating an iOS app can seem a little bit intimidating at first, but using a code editor like Xcode really streamlines the process to the point where you really only need a couple clicks of the mouse and a few lines of code to get a basic Hello World app up and running. But why should you care about creating iOS apps? Well, I think the answer is very straightforward. iPhones are like an extension of our bodies these days, and apps are some of the most in-demand services for companies to make money off of its users. So I think it's very fair to say that if you're competent at iOS development, then you're worth a lot of money to these companies that want to create or maintain their apps. Additionally, like games, creating iOS apps are one of those projects where every line or every couple of lines of code, you really get to see tangible progress. To design apps, you'll have to be well-versed in Swift and Objective-C, which are the primary languages to develop these iOS apps. Again, I know creating an app can sound a little bit overwhelming, but I promise you it's simpler than you might think. There are great free tutorials on YouTube and cheap courses on Udemy that walk you through how to create your own apps, and I think they're very worth checking out. And one final note about apps is that they're a great introduction to the model view controller framework. If you aren't familiar with the MVC framework, it's basically just a software architectural framework that allows for compartmentalization of the different moving parts of a software project. And it's another one of those practical skills that you can develop if you create an app. So the fifth and final project that I have for you today is a journaling application. So we've covered a lot of the different parts of software engineering in the other four projects, but one part we haven't touched on yet is databases. Using an SQL or SQL database is a great way to keep track of journal entries in a journal. And Python has a great module called SQLite that allows you to create a basic SQL database on your local file system. So to create a basic journaling applications, some of the operations that we need to have are how to create, read, update, and to delete journal entries. These are also known as CRUD operations. Similar to the first two projects, you can utilize the terminal as your canvas by having users perform their journal operations in the terminal. And if you wanted to get a little bit fancier with it, you could set up a website to receive post requests if you wanted to create a new journal entry. And in your Python script, you would send a request over to the website's endpoint, and the website would then handle that request and display that journal entry on the website's front end, with the end result being kind of like a remote blog, where you create or handle whatever you need to handle with the journal entries using your Python script on your own computer and display all of the journal entries on a separate website. All right, that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed these five unique project ideas. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you next time.